Let me show you a bunch of emails I've received recently. If you check your spam filter, it's likely you'll see similar ones, or maybe even identical ones. What they all have in common is that they are very obviously scams. They either tell me I'm going to be rich, or have just informed me that I've purchased something that I most definitely have not. Either way, they are trying to extract personal information or to convince me to give them a small amount of money as a way of trying to establish trust. If you're like me though, you found those sorts of emails to be very strange. After all, if they're scams, why are they so transparent? Why wouldn't the scammer do a better job hiding what their true intentions are to increase the likelihood that they'll actually succeed in extracting that information or money from me. It turns out that a little bit of game theory helps explain this. Think about the problem from the scammer's perspective. For them, emails are cheap. They can send out one, two, three, four, seven, a thousand, a million emails, and it all basically costs the same amount of time and money. In contrast, what is precious for the scammer is time. The last thing the scammer wants to be involved in is a long, drawn-out conversation with a potential mark that ultimately goes nowhere. If that potential mark is expressing skepticism and the scammer can't do anything to overcome that, that is time that the scammer could have spent enjoying their own life, or perhaps better yet, scamming someone else who might have been more easily convinced that what was going on was actually legitimate. Instead, what the scammer really wants is to find a mark that is so easily pliable that they will believe every single thing written in the emails and be eager to give a little bit of money up front, then a little bit more money after that, and as much as the scammer can ultimately milk out of them before the mark gets so frustrated that they give up on the conversation. This is what the scammer wants. Something easy and something efficient. They do not want to waste their time. The problem that the scammer has, however, is what we refer to in game theory as an information asymmetry. There are two types of people out there in this world. Those that are not going to easily fall for the scams, and those that are easy marks. Unfortunately for the scammer, when they send an email to a blind email address, they don't know which is which. The types that are easily scammed, and the ones that are not going to fall victim, look essentially the same. Consequently, the goal for the scammer is to devise a way to screen out the people that will know that they are being scammed. Well, how can the scammer do that? It turns out that the answer is to write emails that are very obviously scams. When they get sent out, those people that are not going to be fooled realize that the emails are very obviously scams, and so they simply do not reply. They vanish out into the universe, never to be seen again by the scammers. By design. Because the scammers don't want to waste their time with those people. Instead, the scammers only hear back from the easy targets. At which point, they can initiate a conversation, and begin making money. Of course, if the goal of any singular scam email was to maximize the probability that the scam would actually work for that particular email, we would see a lot more of these. But that's not the goal. Instead, the scammer just wants to maximize their profits given how much time they are spending. And the best way to do that is to send out very obviously scam emails.
Did you see this screening problem coming? If so, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.